Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is tutorial.avi. Hope you're doing well. In today's session, I'm going to show you how to create the slow motion particle simulation. We'll start by setting up a basic PyroSim, slow it down, and then use its motion, specifically the velocity fields, to advect the particle sim. That means the particles will be carried along by the flow of the smoke, giving us these really elegant and organic shapes. The end result is lightweight and super customizable. Perfect for stylized effects shots, motion design, or just leveling up your Houdini skills. Without further ado, let's jump in. Okay, we're going to start with a basic torus geometry. Next, we're going to add a noise to it using a mountain sop. I'm going to set the amplitude to 1.3. After that, I'm going to use a pyrosource node with a particle separation of 0.025 and a density attribute set to default value of 1. Next, I'm going to use an attribute noise to multiply this density attribute. These are the values, as you can see. These are all arbitrary and can be changed. Make sure to set the post process to a minimum of zero. And then add an attribute adjust vector velocity. Give a velocity direction to these particles, as you can see. And then I'm going to add a volume rasterize attribute. And Rasterize the attributes density in V, which is velocity, and set the particle set scale to 0.5. For the pyrosolver, on the pyro simulation, we want the smoke to start fast and slow down midway. To achieve that, we're going to key in the time scale attributes. After we're satisfied with trying different frames for the keyframes, we can move on to keying the density field to get rid of emission. Set the velocity field source to a scale of 10. Also decrease the dissipation to 0.025 to make the smoke last longer. Other things you want to pay attention to are decreasing the buoyancy scale to zero, increasing the gravity acceleration to make sure the smoke doesn't rise up as much. Once you're content with a low quality sim, reduce the voxel size and cache your pyro sim. Okay, now that we're done with the pyro simulation, we can move on to setting our particle source and its necessary colorations. This section can be done with different ways, but I found creating simple attribute randomize and attribute noises using some multiply operations and feeding into color node work wonders. After that, to randomize our p scale attribute, create an attribute noise and name the attribute noise. We are going to use this attribute to set our p scale post sim. You can also create an, another attribute noise and call it specular. We're going to use some points to reflect more light and give it a sandy look in the render. Now we can feed this into the first input of our particle sim and the second input will be our pyro simulation. Let's dive into the particle sim now. The pop net is very simple. You have a pop source, which emits on two frames. And you have a pop advect by volumes node, which uses the velocity field of the pyro simulation that we created. I set the advection method to trace and CFL condition to 0.5 to make the, the advection more accurate. I also use the pop kill to make sure below a certain planar on the Y axis, the particles are killed. I fed this into the pop solver and also made sure the time scale is similar to what we did to the pyro simulation up the minimum and maximum sub steps. I created an attribute delete after the particle sim to get rid of the unnecessary attribute and cache this out. And this is what I have. As you can see, the particles are being advected properly by the pyro sim. And this is exactly what we're looking for. It slows down with the time scale at a certain frame. Next, I use the time blend node for us to be able to change the interpolation of the vectors, velocity vectors into cubic. This is usually set to linear by default. If you change this to cubic, your, your velocities are going to be more rotated instead of uh, straight lines. After that, I added a trail node and computed the velocities again. After the trail node, I use a transform to reposition it 
according to my scene and I set the P scale. So you remember we created this noise attribute free simulation. I also multiplied it with a random ID. I got rid of the necessary attributes again. And yes, our simulation is ready. Now we can progress onto creating the floor particles. For that, I created a regular grid and we want to scatter some points onto this, but we want to make sure that it's not too heavy. So we're going to do a quick frustrum. For that, I created a handy tool. It's a camera frustrum. You feed in the path of the camera that you're using when you're seeing, and you can play around with the distance to cut down how much you're cutting from the geometry. As you can see, my main cam is here like this. You have some camera padding options to grow the cut area like this. Moving on, I use the poly extrude to give it a bit of a depth and use points from volume. I use the same coloration nodes on the pre-simulation here as well so that the particle colors match and set the p-scales. Now I merge these particles together and cache them out. Now our particles are ready for rendering. Okay folks, here we are at the rendering section. Gonna quickly go through how it's set up. I'm basically bringing in our simulated and base particles. I'm adding a material library in which I have a particle subnetwork with a Karma Material X standard surface shader. I use a Material X geometry property value node. So type in geo. Set this to uh, an attribute that we created. You can plug this into the material standard surface like this. For this case, I use the display color, which is in Solaris terms, a color attribute. I plugged it into the base color and I plugged this into the specular. After we're done with the shading, I created a karma physical sky. I went with a lower number for solar altitude and solar azimuth to have like a golden hour, almost like a sunset or a sunrise kind of effect. And I also increased the diffuse multiplier. After that, I also created a lighting setup. I just wanted to have very subtle shadows on top of the points. This is a very simple setup, a sphere dome with a noise applied to it and you delete some uh, threshold. Here we are. I also brought in the camera from the geometry context. I created a camera edit node and played around with the focus distance to have depth of field. And then a karma render settings. I enabled a depth of field and motion blur for this and increased the reflection limit and the diffuse limit. So if we turn this on, here's what we have. You can play around with the color settings, the lighting, maybe even play around with the pyro as well to have your desired effect. And here it is. Here's the gist of it. I hope you like this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. Thank you and have a nice day.